Sorry, Aslan, but Prince Caspian bombed and we don't want anything to do with Narnia if it's not gonna sell. Ha ha ha! What's that to 20th Century Fox? You will a helper bring Voyage of the Dawn Treasure to the big screen? Thank you, Fox. You have saved Narnia. <laughs> The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treasure, first Narnia movie not to be directed by Andrew Adamson, but by Michael Abtet this time, and also the first uh, and currently uh, one Narnia movie not to be uh, made by Disney, but by 20th Century Fox, and is the third and final instalment in the Narnia trilogy, and fingers crossed uh, not the final Narnia movie to ever be made, so... Void of the Dawn Treader tells the story taking place that uh, after the events of Prince Caspian where uh, uh, where uh, Lucy and Susan are uh, forced to stay with their uncle and their pompous bratty cousin Eustace uh, while uh, Susan and Peter are off on a trip in the US uh, and uh, one day unexpectedly uh, they uh, are transported back to Narnia for a third time round uh, through a, a painting that comes to life and uh, they go on this uh, 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 magical adventure across uh, the Narnian oceans and on a mission to look for the uh, lost uh, seven lords uh, of Atelma which uh, King Caspian knows and to uh, uh, collect uh, seven swords uh, to uh, place at Aslan's table uh, to defeat uh, the Dark Island uh, which is uh, corrupting uh, the minds of the citizens of Narnia with its uh, green mist uh, and at the same time uh, uh, they find uh, themselves uh, uh, at uh, the gateway of Aslan's country itself. I'm afraid to say that this is the lowest grossing movie in the Narnia franchise and also the most negatively reviewed critically. It has an even lower Rotten Tomatoes score than Prince Caspian. Now that's just ridiculous. And this entire review is a tremendous thank you to 20th Century Fox, as without them, this movie uh, would never have been made. Uh, while Voyager Dawn Treader was originally uh, planned uh, for a 2009 release, back when Disney had the rights to Narnia, but uh, due to Prince Caspian's uh, box office uh, flop, but Disney sadly didn't want anything to do with Narnia after that, and, and they really should have, uh, but uh, thankfully, uh, 20th Century Fox uh, uh, came to the rescue and uh, they uh, got the rights uh, from the C.S. Lewis estate and uh, and in 2010, uh, two years after Prince Caspian, uh, we finally uh, have uh, the conclusion of uh, the Narnia trilogy and in, and what is in my mind the Pemsey saga of the Narnia timeline. That was so kind of Fox uh, to uh, attempt uh, to uh, keep uh, the Narnia franchise afloat uh, and uh, 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 they uh, succeeded all right. Uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treasure is a near flawless Narnia movie for me and uh, easily my second favourite in the trilogy, uh, just uh, below Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, but uh, it is literally um, an inch away from being equal to Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Um, thank God they adaptated Voyage of the Dawn Treader after Prince Caspian, because Voyage of the Dawn Treader is a much better book than Prince Caspian, and and, and it's a much better movie than the Prince Caspian movie. The magic is back here, and Michael Labted uh, should be known as the saviour of Narnia. Uh, thank uh, goodness uh, he uh, was the director this time. It was uh, the right time for Andrew Adamson to just uh, take the role of producer. And uh, I... I uh, I am shocked uh, that uh, uh, moviegoers uh, don't seem to care about Sonania after Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Uh, it, this, I 
this it sucks that this movie didn't receive the critical praise that it deserves. Uh, everything about this movie is Narnia-esque, and uh, this movie has uh, the uh, best uh, world building of uh, the series, as uh, we finally get to, to go uh, out of uh, the Narnian inland, and we get to see uh, the Narnian oceans and islands for a change, and uh, I, I freaking love uh, the uh, entire adventure in, in this movie of just uh, sailing the Narnian seas and uh, and visiting and exploring all of these uh, well uh, enchanting islands and each island feels unique so there's something uh, new to discover in each one like uh, the lone islands uh, they are islands in which slavery is going on in Narnia and uh, and then there's this island of bouncing duffel puffs, these uh, one-legged dwarfs and, and a sorcerer who uh, gives them advice, and and also this dragon island uh, which uh, in which if you touch uh, that gold uh, you will uh, remain a dragon for the rest of your life. It's so epic that you feel like you're on Narnian holiday or a Narnian tour throughout this entire movie, and that helps it differentiate itself from Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe and Prince Caspian and uh, help it feel extremely original. And I'm speechless by how amazing the design of the Dawn Treader itself, the finest ship in the Narnian Navy, looks. This is also the most visually pleasing uh, of uh, the franchise for me. It's uh, the most CGI heavy, but you never notice uh, the CGI uh, because uh, because the movie is just uh, that that magical. And uh, the yeah the the effect uh, which shows uh, the painting uh, flooding. Uh, uh, Eustace's uh, room, a wonderful visual effect, most wonderful visual effect in the film, and uh, I love uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Lucy and Edmund uh, get to go on a uh, adventure of their own, and they they this is uh, the story where they fully mature, and just just as uh, their uh, sister and brother have before them, you can see how much uh, Lucy has grown in uh, just uh, five years. As uh, she was a uh, nine in Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe, and uh, now she's a uh, fifteen in Voyage at the Dawn Treader, and uh, she goes through a uh, a compelling. Uh, uh, story arc where uh, she is uh, feeling a little insecure about her about her uh, looks and uh, she uh, just she idolizes her sister Susan and wants to be uh, as beautiful as her but you just uh, want her to let her know sweetie you're you're gorgeous because she is gorgeous in this movie she's so gorgeous that she is now my personal Narnia crusher sorry Susan uh, and uh, and how many how many uh, girls at her age have looked at uh, magazines and thought, so why don't I look like that supermodel? But Aslan thankfully appears to her in the mirror and reassures her that she is being a little overly critical of herself and that uh, uh, she uh, is uh, uh, beautiful and uh, and uh, she is uh, the reason that uh, uh, the Pemsies found Narnia, and the friendship she forms with this uh, little girl uh, that snuck on board the dorm treasure to uh, go and uh, look for her parents is so damn sweet that uh, when uh, the girl is like, yeah, when I grow up I want to be just like you. Two characters uh, that return from Prince Caspian are better in Dawn Treader than they were in that movie. I personally love that uh, Caspian, who's now King Caspian, not Prince Caspian anymore, has an English accent and lost his Spanish accent as as the explanation for this is maybe he uh, lost uh, I the Spanish voice when he was uh, 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 spending his time in a more English area in Narnia, and uh, and Simon Pegg this time voices Reaper Chief instead of Eddie Izzard, and Simon Pegg is uh, indeed the superior Reaper Chief. No one touches the tail, and uh, also uh, uh, Susan and Peter do make uh, one cameo appearance in Lucy's uh, uh, nightmare scene, uh, where she herself is in Susan's body, and I'm sure uh, that's uh, Anna Popperwell and William Mosley were a little cheesed off that they couldn't reprise their roles as uh, uh, Susan and Peter uh, for Dawn Treader. This is also this is also the Narnia movie with the most laughs. Uh, uh, my entire uh, audience, especially my mum and sister, were uh, 
having um, such a, a ball with uh, the humour in this movie, especially in the moment when the star comes to them at Aslan's table and Caspian, he's instantly attracted to her. He's like, you're most beautiful. And she's like, if it is a distraction for you, I can change form. And him and Edmund are like, no. Then Lucy looks at them like, boys. <laughs> and I have saved the true star of this movie till last. The most endearing character would be Eustace. Uh, he is uh, simply the Edmund of A Voyage of the Dawn Treader, how he starts out being so whiny but in a hilarious way and like uh, and whenever he uh, writes in his diary, dear diary, yeah and uh, it's it's as if he's uh, narrating the entire movie uh, but uh, once he transforms into a dragon that's when he changes for the better and uh, uh, his uh, friendship with Reaper Cheap uh, helps him redeem himself uh, uh, like how Reba Cheaper boots his confidence uh, when he's in dragon form. And I like Dragon Eustace better than Human Eustace. The dragon is awesome. Three movies in, we finally get to see a dragon in a Narnia movie. Will Poulter has gotten work in more and more blockbusters after this movie, but uh, Eustace uh, would uh, be uh, his uh, most underrated movie role, and he deserves to reprise his role as Eustace in the Silver Chair movie uh, whenever that uh, happens, uh, even though... He may be a little old now, or they can still make him look younger. And this uh, Green Mist is a different uh, kind of, of a villain, as it's a more psychological challenger for our heroes. If somebody falls of Freddy Krueger near that mist, uh, they would be screws, and uh, the, and just uh, the, uh, the final battle with the sea serpents uh, is a, a phenomenal climax of seeing uh, uh, Eustace uh, uh, in dragon form uh, just to uh, throw down with the sea serpents and uh, and then Aslan transforms Eustace back uh, to a human and uh, and thankfully Narnia is saved and they and they finally reach uh, the edge of the world uh, and and the waves uh, which uh, lead to Aslan's country and uh, this uh, 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 goodbye scene, it's uh, a powerfully moving final scene to uh, the Narnia trilogy and you feel like Lucy and Edmund have come uh, a long way and it's so similar to How to Train Your Dragon Free The Hidden World where it's uh, the, an ending to a trilogy where our heroes need to part ways uh, and then the, the end credits are beautifully uh, designed uh, with the illustrations from C.S. Lewis's book and then and that's a uh, wonderful end credit song There's a Place for Us which has two covers by Carrie Underwood and uh, uh, Joe McKeldry and uh, I'm and I'm debating which one I like better. Honestly, I just have a one nitpick with Dawn Treader. I would have loved to see more Aslan. Uh, maybe Aslan could have been uh, the one who uh, uh, sent them on the mission to collect the swords in the first place. So that's one thing I would have changed. Uh, this is not the most fateful adaptation uh, of uh, uh, the Narnia books. Uh, uh, but uh, but that's uh, a positive thing, as this is uh, the kind of adaptation Prince Caspian should have been. So overall, a Dawn Treader is epic and underrated. Uh, screw the critics. Uh, and uh, of the uh, three Narnia movies uh, we have, this is one of the great ones. Uh, there is a script that has been written for the Silver Chair, but a studio has yet to uh, pick us up. Uh, well, they better hurry up, as we've been waiting nine years uh, for uh, the for a for a Narnia movie now. If once I become a director, I would love to adaptate uh, the the other Narnia books. I give the Chronicles of Narnia the Voyage of the Dawn Treasure. Four stars out of five. Great movie. So yeah, and now you all know my thoughts on one of the most underrated movie trilogies uh, of all time. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. What do you think of Voyage at the Dawn Treader? Please comment and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe. Uh, please follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. And I'll see you next time when I review uh, a Downton Abbey movie, uh, Rambo Last Blood and Ad Astra. And remember, movies are us. Bye, guys. <laughs>